magistrates from the second district. And Larry, you are the lucky one on the left. So you just die. <laughs> I think you're outnumbered. <laughs> Yes, you will. You'll get to switch it next time. So, Larry, okay, so you're going to go first, but each of you do have the same question that you're being asked. Um, if elected, how do you plan to establish and maintain a cooperative relationship with your fellow magistrate and judge executive? Good evening, voters. Uh, I thought if you could, you didn't have to do all this stuff. But <laughs> I was wrong. How do I propose to do that? Uh, being in business for years, that was uh, my main purpose was to get along with our customers and to create a good customer base. And I feel like that I can get along with the judge, uh, regardless which one um, is elected, and the magistrates. I know, I know them all, and I think that um, I can work with them. What we can do is we just have to uh, start some programs, get involved, and get some ideas, and go from there. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Kara Mom, for helping me cook tonight. <laughs> Appreciate that. It's um, it's vital that we all get along for the betterment of Ohio County. We're working for you guys, and when we can't get along, it hurts you. So I'll tell you as a magistrate now, speaking from experience, sitting on two courts, guys, new guys coming in, you come in, you work for the county. That's who you're working for first and foremost. You might not always agree. If it's, if it's moral and it's ethical, and it's just a little bit, you might not always agree, but you've got to look out for the better in the county. If you leave, there might be a yes, there might be a no vote. But when you leave that, you leave it at the table, you go back, you come back to the next meeting, and you've got to remember, we're working for people of Ohio County, and you put your differences aside. And that's what I've always done. I work with kids, I see parents every day. I worked in the business for 11 years at the funeral home, so I saw people every day. And I've always felt like working with people will get you a lot further in somewhere than uh, not working with somebody. So I'm just speaking from experience that if you want to move forward and you want better things for your county, it's not to say that you always have to agree. You're not always going to agree. That's part of it. But the better in the county, the next meeting moves on, you're looking out and you sit there and you go through the data and you look over everything and when you make a decision, you make it for the better in the county. When you leave, you come back, and um, I promise you as a manager, you'll feel a lot better doing that, and you'll feel like you serve the people a lot better. Thank you. Okay. Now for the third district, you guys are gonna have the same question, but I'll ask it again, okay? Back up a little bit, I can't let you see the question. <laughs> Order! <laughs> okay. Question is, how do you plan to establish and maintain a cooperative relationship with your fellow magistrates and judge executive? Before I say what I want to say, for those of you who don't know, I was the one over there with the barbecue and it was deer, so if any of you get sick, I know why. I told some of you, some of you I didn't tell that, but it was deer meat, so hope you liked it. Uh, on the campaign trail, I've been asked this question. I try to avoid it because I'm not worried about the judge's race or the sheriff's race. You know, I'm going to have to work with one of these two guys, and, and hopefully I don't have to see one of these two guys. So, you know, I, that's the way I tell everybody. You know, uh, I'm going to have to work with uh, one of those two guys. So, I want to reiterate a little bit of what Jason said. You know, you just got to leave it at the door. Uh, and you may agree to disagree, but, you know, when you vote on whatever you voted on or whatever come across the, that physical court meeting, when you walk out the door, it's over with. Just move on. And uh, you can't hold a grudge. You can't say, well, he didn't vote the way I wanted him to vote, so I'll get him next time. That's no way to be either. Uh, you're doing it for the betterment of the county. Uh, and, and Jason said that. I mean, it's all about the county. Uh, I just want to do what's best, what I think's right. And at the end of the night, I'm going to go home and lay down on my pillow and I'm going to sleep. 
until somebody calls about their road messed up or something, if I'm elected. So, uh, you know, just I don't have an issue with anybody sitting up here. Nobody. Um, I'm real easy to get along with. Uh, I think anybody that knows me would agree. Uh, we all have our opinions. Quit scratching your head. But uh, anyway, thank you. How's everybody doing? Good. I think the number one thing that we can do to all work together is taking the time to listen to each other. You know, if we don't take the time to hear everybody's ideas out and understand them before we tell our ideas, sometimes that, that causes conflicts. And you know, you don't learn as much if you don't take the time to listen to everybody. I don't think there'll be any problems with me being able to work with anybody. Um, I'm easy to go get along with, and I, I will take the time to listen to anybody's ideas. Been out on the campaign trail, and I've learned so much from from the citizens in my district on views on the way they look at the issues. And uh, you know, I took the time to listen, and then not just listen to it, but then really thought about it later when I had the time just to kind of devote. I had a little bit of quiet time there to myself where I could really look, look at the issue they told me about. And that's the biggest thing I believe is communication, taking time to listen to each other and, and really discussing all the matters and getting it all out in the open. Whether it's a yes or no against the person you're talking to, I think the best thing you can do is let them know how you feel, communicate well with them, and then when that subject is over, you know, you go on to the next topic and you start all over again. You don't hold, hold, hold any grudges, there's no reason to be working for the county. And that's the best way I can, I can look at it. Anyway, thank you. Okay, and next we have the second round of questions for our judge executive. When we get to the magistrates, and some of the moderator, and I guess make the calls while I'm up here, what we're gonna do, instead of going to the second district, and then to the third district, we're going to do the third district and the second district next time. I don't want these guys always having the advantage of hearing questions. So trying to make it even, being the moderator and all. So. Okay, Judge Executive, the next question for you guys. And this time, David, you will get to go first. And the question is, the sustainability of the Ohio County Golf Course has been a highly debated issue. What are your plans to address this issue? Well, it's got to give a little time to show, and I think the issues have been addressed. Uh, we've got new greens. Uh, our plane goes up every day. Uh, it's getting uh, closer and closer to breaking even all the time. Uh, it's, it's just going good. Uh, the uh, seasonal members got off slow start this year, but as, as the uh, year went on, more and more of them joined. And, and uh, that, that's where you pay your whole year at one time. And we even had uh, five people paid for their whole lifetime at one time. And this makes it uh, go good. And, uh, uh, and we're making it a, a more uh, uh, pleasurable experience for the people that come and play. And we remove anything that makes it not be a pleasant experience. And uh, working on the facility all the time. Not putting a lot of money into it, but we're, we're working on the facility all the time. And uh, we're promoting it. Our guys that play there go to other courses and promote it, and it just keeps going up and up all the time. And we're just going to keep it maintained well uh, and keep uh, promoting it, and it's no doubt at all that it's going to be totally sustainable. Thank you. Well, as most of you know, I voted against the county weather and golf course. And for the very reasons that it tends to be nationwide proven that golf, golf course closings exceed openings for the past eight years. There's several different reasons for that. Um, one reason being the economic downturn we've seen. One reason it being in this area is the short playing season. Um, but it's not that I'm against us having a golf course. And that's where so many people have looked at it that 
ones for and ones against. The difference between the two of us is that that uh, I want the people to realize that it is a, it has been at a great loss. Um, the last complete fiscal year, it lost 91,000. And this fiscal year, from July 1 to the end of August, it lost 33,000. Now, my uh, way of looking at that would be, and I mentioned this, about next June 15th, which would almost complete the second full fiscal year, but to be able to have a meeting similar to what we have here tonight and look at the numbers. And we don't know what those numbers may be, but if those numbers show of a loss of $80,000, then we would have to look at, okay, is there 80 people that would like to participate for another year? Could you possibly go another $500 annually? That would reduce that loss to $40,000 a year. And I hear a lot from the high school having a golf team now. That's a wonderful, wonderful uh, sport for them to be in. Um, my, my question is there, if the Board of Education funds all the other sports, soccer and, and uh, football and band and basketball, I think maybe that would be a place that the Board of Education could help in reducing our losses to make it more sustainable. Thank you. This time, um, David, you're going to get to go first. And the question again for each of you is what involvement do you plan your office to have both with the youth and the elderly citizens in Ohio County? Well, I can tell you now that we spend a lot of time with our children in Ohio County. There we go. Uh, and our fans are, are going to continue. We have an uh, outdoor task force where we take uh, kids that normally would not get to go hunting or fishing or turkey hunting, uh, have mentors uh, in the county that join with me, and we take these uh, young men and girls hunting and fishing. We also, as I mentioned earlier, my deputies have adopted each of school, and they spend quite a bit of time uh, in the schools uh, with these children. Uh, matter of fact, in the uh, Fortville area, Deputy Harrell has actually formed several clubs that he meets with these children on, on a weekly basis, sometimes bi-weekly basis. So we spend a lot of time with those children. Uh, there's not a time that I can't go to Walmart or to a restaurant or even outside out of the uniform that these children don't recognize me because of our canine unit and, and the things that we do with them. And as far as the seniors, we have many times been out to the senior citizen building and, and other areas where maybe the elderly are, are victims of scams. And we post those on our Facebook. Uh, we go out to those folks and, and talk to those folks on how not to be victimized uh, by those scams. So we continue to do those things. We're going to continue to do those things. And it can only grow as we uh, uh, keep doing this. So. That's, that's all, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> you know, uh, our, our children, our, our youth uh, groups are our future to this county, and we have to, uh, we have to keep the drugs and the, the alcohol and the substance abuse away from our kids. Um, my plan is to uh, get back into the schools with our D.A.R.E. program. This is a daily talk curriculum that we will have officers in our schools. They will teach it daily. Um, I, I don't mean just to our high school students. We want to go K through 12. Um, you know, we have two full-time officers in the schools. They will be available to do some of that teaching. I plan on bringing some of my officers into the schools to do other teachings throughout the county uh, at, at the times that we're not busy. We also will, will develop training in each community for the parents. Uh, those parents with troubled children, uh, some of the youth that have problems that we need to help the parents along with, um, along with our community coalitions, our seniors will receive uh, updates from us, training, like I said, on what drugs look like, what to look for, uh, things of that nature. Uh, also, we will tie that in with OCAM. Uh, it has been a big, very big part of our community services 
as far as neighborhood watch goes we will re-establish those community meetings with neighborhood watch tie those all together and and use that for training tools for our seniors uh, along with the vision of having a 24-hour patrol for our citizens our deputies to live here in ohio county that are accessible to our people i think this will be a plus for our seniors our youth everyone involved in in our program thank you